Thank you for having me at this session. Um, I'm excited to talk about the tools that we're developing at the intersection of genomics, uh, as well as microscopy, and also how we're applying computational tools uh, to make sense of this data for um, understanding basically the spatial localization of genetic programs within cells and, and tissues. Um, I think uh, to motivate this work, I want to point out that there's been recently one uh, set of tools which has really advanced, um, revolutionized the study of molecular mechanisms in cells and tissues. Uh, and that's uh, the set of approaches for single cell transcriptomics. And in single cell transcriptomics, you can break down a tissue into its constituent cells uh, and sample the transcriptome of each cell. Uh, and this is powerful because it's comprehensive. It lets you look at the cell types and states, as well as the molecular programs within those cells. Um, and so you can get a sense of, so what are, what are the molecules driving kind of dysfunction and disease, or, or what are the programs that are acting in development? However, fundamentally, we have to remember uh, that um, in single cell transcriptomics, you take kind of a structured 3D tissue, some biological specimen, and you dissociate it into this slurry uh, of single cells. And in that process, you lose kind of the structure and the spatial context of where those cells came from. Uh, and obviously in biology, that's very important because cells communicate to each other. Uh, they self-organize to form uh, kind of the structure uh, and, and, and function of, of tissues. And, and beyond that, you know, cells and tissues are also dynamic, right? They divide, they migrate, and they differentiate. And we also lose kind of like not only the spatial context, but the temporal context uh, when we take these snapshots uh, of, of tissues. And so, you know, we're, we were very motivated, my group, to provide uh, kind of these, these contexts in single cell measurements. Like how do we make these measurements uh, about the molecular programs of cells while still maintaining the spatial context? And, and I think this is really motivated by three main classes of organizational problems. Um, one is how are tissues organized molecularly by molecularly defined cell types? Uh, as we become you know, better and better at collecting these single cell data sets, we can find, discover hundreds of molecularly annotated uh, cell types. And uh, we really have no idea how they're organized within 3D tissues. And then how does, the second is how does spatially differential gene expression patterns relate to our understanding of, of what a cell type is and how cell types function? And lastly, what are gene expression changes with respect to kind of regions of interest, and such as the case of pathology? You know, for a long time, we, we've been able to look under the microscope and examine um, features and tissues just in, in these H and E stains, which are just two different differential stains of the proteins and, and the nucleic acid content. And, and we can use our eyes to kind of like, uh, or pathologists can at least, use their eyes to understand, to classify areas of dysfunction. But what we'd really like to know is how do these like human classified areas relate to like molecular changes uh, in the tissue? So um, to kind of uh, access these classes of motivational problems, uh, we've developed uh, a technology called SlideSeq, uh, which is a tool which enables genome-wide expression for profiling in tissues at 10 micron resolution or about the size of single cells uh, in mammalian tissues. And this is kind of a, a joint effort between my group and Evan McCosco's here at the Broad. And, and the big picture of SlideSeq is it effectively lets you do that single cell sequencing, um, untargeted single cell sequencing, and at the same time, it lets you know where, where your cells uh, came from. And so how do we do this? Uh, well, in SlideSeq, we deposit individually barcoded polystyrene beads. Uh, each one of these beads uh, is about 10 microns in diameter, and each bead has hundreds of millions of oligonucleotides, uh, which have this structure where they have a PCR handle, uh, which allows uh, you to amplify uh, the capture, captured mRNA. It has a poly-DT uh, tail, which captures uh, poly-A mRNA a spatial bead barcode, which is kind of a clonal sequence, which is the same for all of the oligos on a bead, but different among beads, and a unique molecular identifier, which allows for counting. And, and what we do is we deposit these beads randomly on a, uh, a surface, and then we take a microscope uh, and sequence the clonal bead barcodes for each uh, of these beads. And so, so here's a surface with 15 um, 
of these white circles. Each circle is about three millimeters in diameter with 100,000 of these beads sitting on the surface. And then I, I won't exactly describe to you uh, this, this process of sequencing, but uh, in effect, it lets you know at the end uh, the X, Y locations associated with each one of these spatial bead barcodes. Okay, and so you can think of each one of these uh, beads as like kind of a pixel in a camera. And instead of taking pictures of, 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 of the tissue, it's capturing parts of the transcriptome and you're reconstructing images uh, of the transcriptome from these beads. And so when we, um, so, so when we actually perform the experiment, we can, we can take these arrays, which have been produced up front, and uh, we can take a piece of tissue and just actually section it on a, a thing called a cryostat, which is kind of like a fancy deli slicer. And you section a very thin uh, 10 micron section onto uh, these beads. The RNA from that tissue gets transferred onto the beads. And then you can put that into kind of standard uh, molecular biology approaches to uh, amplify um, the RNA uh, to generate a sequencing library, which is very similar to single cell sequencing. When you sequence the libraries, um, you get data that's very much like uh, single cell libraries. So for each barcode on the bead, uh, you get a vector. And along that vector, you have the counts across each gene in the transcriptome. And so across all the barcodes, you have this matrix, right? Bead barcodes on one side and the uh, genes on, on the other. And now if you remember, we have the spatial location of each bead. And so we can just match them up. And so now you have an XY location to each bead barcode and now thus an XY location to each teach read. And so what does the data look like? Um, it actually has very similar structure as single cell data. So we can apply similar computational tools such as dimension of noun reduction and clustering. And so here we've actually performed SlideSeq on the mouse hippocampus. Uh, and on the very uh, basically um, left here, we've clustered the, the gene expression profiles in, in an unsupervised way. And what we've done is we've, cl we've colored the beads uh, by uh, the cell type as clustered by, as defined by their, their molecular, by the genes uh, which are expressed in each cluster. And in the middle, what we've done is we've actually just colored the beads in the array by which cell type they belong to. Um, and there's actually no microscopy done, but we can reconstruct the architecture of the tissue and where the cell types reside. And, and you know, here's actually uh, what, what a microscope picture looks like. And you can see that you recapitulate these layers of cells and these layers of cells uh, you know, some anatomy about the hippocampus campus, uh, reside in different layers. For example, here's like a layer of CA1 neurons. Here's the dentate gyrus. And here's oligodendrocytes, which separate the cortex from, from the hippocampus. And so the, so the takeaway is that there's no microscope. Uh, we've actually turned the sequencer into a microscope using these, these beads as pixels uh, on the microscope. Okay, so, um, you know, just, just a little bit of, about how, how this technology works. Uh, it has very high spatial resolution. Uh, this is one of the first questions that comes up, like what's the resolution of the capture? And we've directly compared kind of like the features as you, you see in, in this slides, this sort of molecular capture approach with, with microscopy of the same features. And you get that there's, there's very little diffusion happening in this process. And, and so the resolution is, is really the size of the pixel, which is about 10 microns. We, we've, we've spent a lot of work improving the molecular sensitivity, which is like how many molecules can each... Uh, one of these pixels capture from the tissue. Uh, we've improved it about an order of magnitude to about a thousand molecules per pixel. Um, we think this can be improved further. And just as a sense of scale, this is similar to what you would get in the first generation single cell sequencing approaches. And, and we think there's a couple, a uh, factor of a couple left uh, to improve just through molecular biology improvements. And, and the other thing is we really try to uh, demonstrate that it's scalable across different tissue types and organisms. Uh, and, and we've we've demonstrated on across a, a variety of, of mouse organs, human human tumors and embryos in, in development. And the other thing is that you can take many sections in in serially and try to reconstruct them into one large three D volume. So uh, we have been trying to do that. And so beyond that, I think um, there's this class of spatial capture transcriptomic problem uh, approaches. Uh, generates some very interesting like computational problems for the analysis of data. Uh, I've shown you how you can use unsupervised clustering to assign cell types to these spatial locations uh, on the array. 
But, but actually, um, in many cases, you'd like to be able to use existing single-cell RNA-seq references where you've defined the cell types, and maybe you have higher molecular resolution on what those cell types are, and project that into the pixels on the array. And so, so we've devised uh, a supervised learning approach to decompose kind of each pixel on the array into um, single-cell type cell types as defined from a single-cell reference. Uh, and... The other thing is, is that each pixel can capture RNA from more than one cell. Even though it's about the size of a cell, cells can land, uh, you know, across two pixels. And so the idea is to es estimate the contributions from each cell type to each bead or pixel in the array using kind of an already annotated single cell reference uh, using a uh, reference-based probabilistic model. Uh, and I, I, I won't go into detail exactly about how the model works, but the idea uh, this is really led by Dylan Cable, a graduate student in lab, and, and Rafa uh, Irizarry, who's co-advising him. And so, um, so um, we've demonstrated actually performed detailed computational simulations with single cell and single nucleus data sets that demonstrates that using this method, we can classify cell types across different sequencing modalities. For example, here we use a single cell RNA-seq data set as the reference to classify single cell sequenced with single nucleus RNA-seq, uh, with the diagonal here representing ground truth. Uh, and um, you can see that we do quite well. But not only that, we can actually now computationally mix cell types from these two different data sets, and we can identify mixtures of cell types accurately, i.e. we can tell which two cell types have been mixed on each pixel. And then we can decompose those pixels, those mixtures, into the fractional contents of the constituent cell types uh, with quite high accuracy. And so um, this is, I think, really exciting and gets at the heart of what we're trying to access with spatial transcriptomics, because uh, what we really want to know is, in, you know, how does the gene expression within a cell type change as a function of its spatial context? And to be able to do that, you have to, uh, you have to understand both the spatial location of those cells and be able to assign them to kind of within like a molecular cell type. Um, and I think... Uh, using RCTD, we're beginning to be able to do that. For example, we can condition on a given cell type, for example, here on uh, CA3 neurons within the, the hippocampus, and we can, we can discover kind of cell type specific spatial variation. Uh, so what, what percentage of genes, what, what, are the, what is the variation in genes in, along this axis uh, of cells? This is a spatial axis. Uh, just for example, here in the, in these subregions of CA3. And importantly, we can also find gene expression uh, changes as a function of who, which who your neighbors are, right? Like if you're cell type A, like for example, if you're an astrocyte, how does your gene expression change if your neighbors are excitatory neurons? And so here are just some examples of genes where we can systematically discover gene expression changes uh, in your cellular neighborhood. And so I think this is going to be extremely powerful way uh, to like deconvolve the contributions of cell type and cellular environment on basically um, the variation in the transcriptome. And I think this is kind of an approach that will allow us to use that to then discover cell-cell interactions and receptor ligands that are actually active in between cell types. And, and so this is uh, something that we're quite excited about and, and really focused on working on in the lab. So just as a summary, uh, I, I, I told you about uh, some technologies uh, some experimental technologies for, for basically spatially profiling the transcriptome, uh, SlideSeq. And, and, um, and this is leveraging kind of using microscopy to generate these spatially barcoded arrays. But I think one of the, you know, um, one of the most important things uh, as we generate lots and lots of this data is computational algorithms uh, that allow us to interpret kind of this high content uh, and high dimensional data, right? Because we have gene expression across space. And I, I showed you some algorithms that we developed to assign spatial cell types, but I think there's really a lot of work uh, to be done to understand how does gene expression vary in space within those cell types and how do we discover cell-cell interactions and the molecular components of those cell-cell interactions. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is we're, we're leveraging a, like other sorts of genomic tools into these same sort of measurements including uh, measuring kind of DNA and RNA separate simultaneously in multiomics and, and kind of also uh, sequencing the identity of, of, of receptors 
and, and immunology and understanding how those receptors actually, uh, the localization of those receptors change uh, within tissue. So um, thank you for your time. I just want to acknowledge the people who have done this work, uh, including uh, kind of, uh, this is the team who does mainly does SlideSeq, Evan McCosco, who's uh, a PI at the Broad, who's jointly leading this work with me, uh, along with Sam and Bob, who uh, are graduate students who led the SlideSeq work, uh, and um, the additional members of the team here. Thank you very much.